What's up everybody? Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to talk about my recommended top 5 sport bikes for short riders who are just getting into the sport. Oops. Number five, I'm gonna talk about the Hondas here. And if you follow my channel for a while, I don't know much about the Hondas because I haven't been around them much and I haven't ridden any of them at the test rides or anything. But I do think that they'd be a viable option because they do have the 300 and the 500 class. You have the options between the naked version and the full fairing version. And Hondas generally make very good products and you'll be able to find servicing Everywhere you go, um, there's going to be a dealer somewhere, and the parts should be reasonably priced, and the MSRP values for these bikes are very reasonable too. With the 300s, it's a single cylinder, and with the 500s, it's a parallel twin. So the CB300F MSRP is 4999 and then the CB500F um, is 6799 parallel twin, uh, 471 cc's. And then with the fairing versions, it's the CBR 300R that retails for $4,899. And the CBR 500R is uh, $6,699 in Canadian here. We have the seat height of 30.9 uh, inches. So all throughout, um, according to the website, they say that they have all the same seat height. So uh, maybe a little bit tall because I am really short, as you guys know. Um, you might have to be a bit on your tippy toes for the really, really short riders probably looking at this video, but here we're kind of going through all the options that are kind of reasonable. I do find whenever I sit on the Honda, I don't really like the seat personally. I think it's a little hard. Um, I know that they're a little bit wider too, so they may seem a little taller than some of the other options in this list today. All right, number four on the list is the BMW G310R. It's a new bike that hasn't come out yet, and if you see my videos before that you'll see I have a video on it already, pushing it around, trying to sit on it myself, and you can see that my foot reach, I've got about uh, the tips of my toes down, and it's very lightweight and easy to maneuver, um, even just pushing it around. It'll be a good beginner bike for people because it's uh, 313 cc's, has a seat height of 30.9 inches, and it's a single cylinder, um, so you got to keep that in mind. Two cylinder but motorcycles would be a little smoother than single cylinders. I read on the website that it has a max speed of 145 kilometers an hour, and the Canadian MSRP is going to be $5,250. Number three, the third top motorcycle that I highly recommend in the sports or sports naked category is the Suzuki SV650. Uh, the 2017 model has a single round headlight, so it's got more of the classic look. And I got to test ride this bike last year in 2016. It was a very comfortable and easy to ride, um, very uh, pleasant, and I really liked it. So I think for you guys who are newer riders, um, might be enjoy that bike as well. It does have a seat height of 30.9 inches as well, and I did find it a little tall for me with the inseam of 28 and a half inches and at five feet tall. So it's gonna be a good option for you guys. I hope you can check it out. It is the biggest bike in all of the ones I'm recommending today. It's a 645cc engine and it retails for $7,799. Um, it's a V-twin, it's a four-stroke, and it has a low RPM assist, which would make your takeoffs really smooth and pleasant. It's going to resist stalling when you let the clutch out by accident or you don't have that control yet. It has that, um, I, I want to say clutch assist feature, but it helps you uh, resist stalling the bike. So that's kind of a nice feature for new riders. Also, side note, I was just checking on the website here on Suzuki and I noticed that they have released GSX 250R. So I guess Suzuki is getting into the 250 category here. I don't know much about the bike yet. I think it's brand new for 2018. So I guess they want to get into the entry level bikes too, but in the sport world. So I look forward to seeing that from Suzuki. All right, guys, so number two. The second most recommended bike that I would offer to people is the Ninja 300. You guys know I'm a big fan of this bike. I've ridden it many times. 
It's a very lightweight, easy to ride bike, well-rounded. Its seat height is 30.9 inches as well. And I think the seat is a little more narrow, so you won't find this one to be as tall as some of the previous recommendations. All around, it's a really good bike. You can get so many options now between the standard base model. MSRP here in Canada is $5,499 and up to $6,099 for the um, ABS edition. So you got a big range of which model that you want to get. Since it's been out for a few years now, you'll be able to find it on the used market. I've seen some of them out, the 300s, because they first came out in 2013, I believe. So they've been around for four years and I've seen some for like Canadian 3000, 3500, you can probably get a used 300 Ninja. If that's what you want to do to save a bit of money, then I highly recommend that. And then, number one, the most recommended bike for a short rider who's just getting into the sport, I highly recommend the Yamaha R3. I've done a couple videos of this bike already. I've test driven it and I did one at the motorcycle show and where I talk about it a bit more. But to me, this bike is the one I think that if I had the money and wanted a small CC bike, it's what I would get. It looks fantastic and I really like the front end. It looks like a bigger bike and it's very reasonably priced. They just released this year that you can get the ABS model here in North America and the base model is $5,099, and then the ABS model is $5,799. It has 321cc, it's an inline twin, and it has a seat height of 30.7 inches, so it's going to be a really comfortable bike, and I think that you guys will like it a lot. Alright, now the differences between the Ninja 300 and the R3. I thought about this a lot guys, so here's my thoughts on that. The Ninja 300 is a little bit wider feeling on the tank, in my opinion, and then the R3 is a little more narrow and a little taller looking, but it's not actually taller. And whether you go for either one, I don't think you'll lose either way. ABS or no ABS, how important is that to you? For myself, I learned on the 250 Ninja and there was no ABS option. And I was fine with that. I mean, th there was no option. <laughs> you, you just you just went for it, right? So what I found without ABS, I learned how riding the bike and you, if you accidentally put down the brake on the rear a little too hard, let's say your you know traffic's backed up and you suddenly got to stop, you may step on the back brake a little too hard. I found it locked it up a bit, and you. You could feel what it felt like to lock the brakes, and that was a good experience actually. I found it, um, you learn a lot, you know. You learn how that feels for one, and then you learn, oh, okay, I can survive that, you know. <laughs> like, it was scary at the moment, but I, it was fine in the end, right? ABS is a way uh, for the new riders, uh, it'll, it'll do some braking motions for you, simply put. So it'll sound like this. Chung, 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 chung. So just like in your car, it'll slow you down if it feels you're sliding a bit. If you're hitting a bit of gravel or braking a little hard, it'll control it so you don't lock the brakes and you don't slide out. That's the goal there. So for myself, ABS is not a must, but it is a luxury and it will cost a little bit more. Like I said, the R3, the base model is $5,099 and with ABS it's $700 more. So up to you. If you can afford it, no big deal, and if you can't, then it's also no big deal. Leave that choice up to you. So, special mention for other sport bikes that are going to be really great for short riders is the Ninja 250. That is my favorite bike because it was my first bike, and there are a lot of them on the market, and they're going to go for cheap now because they're used, and they're older, right? So, the last year that they've released them here in Canada and North America is 2012. You'll find 2009s to 2012s to be very good ones. You know, like, when you're looking at the smaller engine bikes, they are pretty simple. They don't have much to them, you know? So if you buy one, you can get um, one of the service shops or someone you know who's mechanically inclined to take a look at it for you. There's not going to be too much that will need work, but if I were you, look for one that has low mileage and not much wear on them, if you can. You can always get new tires and you can always replace the fairings, but you know what? Depending on whether you want to keep that bike for a long time or not, you may not want to put more money into it. I know with my bike, I put 
quite a bit in because I, I got a Yashimura pipe. I put a tank pad on. I did lower the bike as well because I felt more comfortable having three quarters of my foot down rather than just my tippy toes when I was starting. Everything is up to your personal choice and I wish you guys very good luck. If you have any other recommendations for sport bikes for short riders, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I would love to discuss that with you guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Number three. Number, th number three. <laughs> number three. The top third motorcycle 